Hello everybody and welcome to Fight Life Nation. Today we're going to talk about a fight that's on the undercard of UFC 272 featuring Jorge Masvidal versus Kobe Covington. The fight I want to talk about, is, which is a very interesting fight between two women, is a fight between Marie, Mariana, Agapa, or Mariana Morose versus Maria Agapova. Now, Maria Agapova, I'm not 100% sure if it's Agapova or Agapova, but we're going to go with Agapova. But these are two women in the 125-pound division. These are two former teammates that are fighting. And these are two former teammates that have a lot of bad blood. Uh, I guess when they were teammates, they used to be sparring partners. And then when Agapova or Agapova decided to leave, the Morose went on social media, talked a lot of trash about her. She did an interview where she said that she was a drug, drug user. She, she really ran her name into the ground. I'm not saying whether that's true or not. I really don't know. But it makes for a fun fight. So we're going to go over each fighter. At the end of the video, I'm going to give you my prediction. I'm going to tell you how I think the fight's going to go. And this one's really tough to call. This is a really interesting fight. So let's start with uh, Maria Agapo Agapova. Or Agapova. Uh, she, she goes by the nickname of the Demon Slayer. She's 24 years old. She was born in 97, so yes, yeah, 24. Let's see, she's 5'6", with a 68-inch reach. It's pretty good for, for a women's division. Uh, she's from Kazakhstan, uh, which is in Eastern Europe. She has a pro MMA record of 10, 2, and 0. Her, she's currently on a one-fight win streak. All right, so Maria Agapova, when, uh, when, when she came into the UFC, she started with the... With the uh, Dana White's Contender Series. Excuse me, guys. She started with Dana White's Contender Series and she took a loss. This was back in 2019, so she was probably about 20 or 21 years old when she got this fight. I don't think she was quite ready yet. Um, she didn't think she was quite ready yet. She said she wasn't happy. She was over focused on the fight. And she didn't feel like she was having fun. She ended up taking the loss. It was a unanimous decision. So she went to Invicta. She earned a couple wins. She beat Alexis Connors, Alexa Connors, and Mariela Santos. No, no, no big names. She came into the UFC. She came in in uh, June of 2020, and I remember watching this fight. I remember watching this fight live. It was on a UFC Fight Night. She fought uh, Hannah Cyphers, and Hannah Cyphers is a is a girl who at the time she was 10 and five. Hannah Cyphers was always like this um, uh, gatekeeper of the women's divisions. Uh, she wasn't. She's not a great fighter, but she's pretty steady. She can give a lot of girls a, a lot of good fights. She's had her own uh, ups and downs, but it was a great fight for her to have. Agapova looked spectacular in this fight. Agapova came out and uh, really took it to Hannah Cyphers. Took her up against the cage. Was hitting her with all kinds of different shots. A little bit wild, but she really reminded everybody of, of, of Joanna and Jacek. The way she was, she was throwing out punches. She's got a very Muay Thai style. It's exciting. She's a high volume striker. So against Hannah Cyphers, it looked great. She ended up slipping in a rear naked choke. She looked like she got to the rear naked choke really easy. She looks like she trains for that. That was a, that was a real fun fight to watch. So she had a lot of uh, hype around her when she was going into her next fight. Her next fight, she fought Shayna Dobson. And Shayna Dobson at the time was 3-4. and four. So if you can imagine someone who was 9-1 and one at the time taking on someone who was 3-4. and four, it, it seemed like a mismatch. A lot of people were kind of down on this fight. They didn't understand why it was happening. But what was even weirder was how the fight went down. Aga, uh, uh, Agapova went out there and kind of just looked reckless when you watch the fight. She doesn't look in control from the very beginning. She, she went out there and she thought she was just going to run through Dobson. And after about the first minute, she just stopped throwing clean strikes. She was just throwing them all wild. She looked tired. Uh, she got taken down. She got some takedowns, but and then she ended up on the bottom. It looked really sloppy. She got super tired, and then in the second round, in between rounds, she looked like she was dead. She looked like she she was taking some really big deep breaths. Dobson took advantage. Was either was able to beat her with ground and pound. It was a huge step back for Agapova. Uh, I think a lot of people started doubting her after that. So the next fight, and this is what's interesting, because Agapova, Agapova, she's she's a tail. Of three fights. Every fight she's been a different person. So in her third fight she fought, she fought Sabina Mazo, Who at the time was 9-2. and two. So this is 9-2 and two versus 9-1. and one. Uh, uh, Mazo was a heavy favorite. 
She was a two to one favorite. Maza goes in there, and uh, and Agapa was a totally different fighter. She looks so much more like Joanna in this fight, but like a, a stronger version. She looks bigger. When she looks good in this fight against Mazo, she looked like she she can contend against Valentina Shevchenko. She doesn't look ready yet, but she looks a hundred percent like okay, this is somebody who can one day take on Valentina. You know, she had uh, excellent striking. She looked powerful. The only thing about this fight that I didn't like, and if you watch her strike, every once in a while, it's not every punch, but with her right hand, she tends to throw like almost like a hammer fist instead of a, a, a punch. And uh, I think that it looks sloppy. It looks like that's something that she has to fix. Yeah, I, but she was able this time, instead of like her fight against Shayna Dobson when she went a little wild and she was trying to throw maybe like everything throw the kitchen sink all at once this time she was taking her shot she would she would fire like a four punch combination and then kind of circle around fire a four punch combination circle around and she was hitting Mazza with almost everything she looked really good uh, she didn't throw as many kicks as she did against Cyphers but she threw just enough that it, it's, it's something you got to watch out for I highly think if she fights like she does against Mazo, she's going to do really well in the division but the problem with Maria Agapova is you never know what you're gonna get with her. This is three fights now. Three fights I've done. I watched all three fights. She looks different in all three fights. And if you go back to the Tracy Cortez fight when she fought at Dana White's Contender Series, she looked different there. Facing Maria Agapova on Saturday night is gonna be Mariana Moros. She is a Ukrainian. She was born in the Ukraine, so you figure that's gonna hold a lot of weight on what's going on on Saturday. It's either going to be motivation for her or it's going to it's going to hold her back. I'm not sure. I don't blame her either way. It's really a rough situation for her to be going through. I'm sure her family, she has family over there. She, she was posting pictures on her Instagram about how she went to school over there. She was born over there. Uh, it's a terrible situation for her to have to even have to fight in this situation. She's a 5'7". She has a 67 inch reach. She has a 10-3 record, so it's very similar to Maria Gapova. But the difference is, is her, she's got more years. It's all spread out more. She hasn't fought as much recently. Her last fight was against Myra Bueno Silva. And that was the first fight in Brazil when the pandemic happened. That was the one where they, they went to Brazil and they closed off the stadium. And they, they still had the fights though. She, she fought Bueno Silva. That's the only fight that was available on ESPN. This is the only one I actually watched of her. I have watched fights of her in the past. I just didn't remember as much. I'm only going off of what I saw against Buena Silva. The first thing I want to say is she is an excellent boxer. She, she throws out a very crisp jab. She jabs to the body. She jabs to the head. She mixes it up more than, than MMA fighters do. I think it's a really good, uh, really good strike to, to, to do to keep that, you know, keep, Agapova on her toes uh, against Maria, Mary, Mary, Myra Bueno Silva. Excuse me, guys. Against Myra Bueno Silva, she she struggled a little bit. She looked really good, and then Bueno Silva would throw really big strikes and hurt hurt uh, Morose. So so while Morose was landing more, Morose was taking her down. Morose was doing different things in the fight. She's very dynamic. Uh, she would definitely get hit more by by. Uh, by Bueno Silva, and that makes me wonder how it's going to be against a good striker like Agapova. Against Bueno Silva in the third round, she got a real bad cut on her. Uh, she got hit really hard. She was getting hit with spinning back fish. She was getting hit hard with leg kicks, but she looked really good. She was throwing good punches. Her striking is, is phenomenal. I really do like it. Uh, the only problem is uh, she's got very poor defense. At the time, Bueno Silva was 6-0 and when she fought her. Uh, it didn't work out so well. Before Bueno Silva, these are fights I haven't watched them, but her, her level of competition is so much better than Maria Gapova's. So she comes in and she faces uh, Joanne Wood, used to be Joanne Calderwood, and she won that via armbar in the first round. She fought Valerie Letourneau and lost via unanimous decision. She fights a lady named Christina Staniccio, and she wins that. And then she fought Daniel Taylor, who is a very good fighter, not great. Uh, she fought Carla Esparza. You know how good Carla Esparza is. She lost that that fight. She lost by unanimous decision. She fought Angela Hill when Angela Hill was on the tear. And she lost that fight by decision. And she fought Sabina Mazo. So Sabina Mazo 
is the uh, the same opponent that they have, the like opponent. Uh, in that fight, she won by decision. So she didn't do enough to, to finish her like Agapova did, but she did get the win. So, I mean, when you look at it, Myra Moros, you, you have to watch her fight. If you watch her fight against Myra Bueno Silva, and I keep saying her name wrong, it's Mariana Moros. But when you watch her fight against Myra Bueno Silva, she looked great, even though she started to struggle towards the end because uh, Bueno Silva landed some big shots. She was in charge basically the whole fight. She was the aggressor. Uh, she she held off Bueno Silva, who started looking good towards the end. She did good. Then she just ran into some cancellations. I guess she had some problems with her visa. So she tried to fight. The next the next fight was against Montana De La Rosa. It didn't work out. To, uh, Talia Santos it got canceled. Um, Manon Fer Ferro, that got canceled. Luana Carolina got canceled. And when she was doing an interview, she said most of it was because either an injury or because of visa problems. Visas really got her in trouble because of uh, COVID. So this is a big layoff. This is a big fight for her. Uh, this is a big fight for both of them. So I'll tell you exactly what I think. You know, uh, coming into this fight, I really thought that, uh, I really thought Agapova, I favored her heavy. Uh, I like her style. She's very violent when she throws strikes. She looks good. But it's just that you don't know what you're going to get with her. You know, she's one fight she looks spectacular. One fight she looks terrible. You never know exactly what you're going to get. It's hard to predict. From the fight where I, I, I seen uh, Morose, I felt like you can kind of see who she is. You can see exactly what she does. Her jabbing, her, her punches. She throws in some kicks. She was on the national team for Ukraine. That tells you how good she is at striking. I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of this fight. I just think that it's going to be a stand-up war. I think the difference is going to be who can control who on the ground. I really like uh, Agapova's switching, how, how she switches. She, she, can, she can really go from striking to, to a submission attempt very cleanly. I really like, I like the way she does. It very much reminds me of an elite uh, grappler. I'm not saying that she is a, an elite grappler. I think uh, Agapova definitely has higher potential. She's so young. There's, there's a, a lot for her to learn. The only thing that's holding me back, the only thing that makes me wonder if she can handle this is, is at her record, she just hasn't fought as many good fighters and she has two terrible losses. Her loss to, it, her loss to Shayna Dobson was terrible. It's, has she overcome that? Has she looked past that? That's going to be the question. I'm going to take in this fight. I'm going to go with Maria Agapova. I really like her striking. I can't look past it. I want. I, I really. I was leaning both ways. I thought I'd go with Morose. After thinking about it for a while, I. I, I just watching that last fight. Watch it. You got to go off the last fights. Her last fight uh, for Agapova when she fought Sabina Mazo. She really took it to Mazo. I don't see her getting that much over on uh, Morose. I went and checked the odds. I checked it after I've already made my prediction. Maria Agapova is a plus or a minus 178 favorite you have to put down 178 dollars to win 100 dollars. that's a pretty strong favorite uh for morose you gotta you put down 100 dollars, you can win 153 i'm gonna tell you the truth there's a really good chance morose can win this this is another fight I, i'm gonna be honest even though the they're, they're putting the vegas is saying like hey agapova is is a big favorite I think betting on this fight would be really tough. I'm going to pick Agapova. I wouldn't put money on it. it, it I'm not very strong. Uh, I just feel like Morosa's striking is really good. There's a lot of bad blood. This is a super interesting fight. I can't wait to watch it. Let me know who you think will win down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're going to have even more uh, breakdown videos coming out. Let me know what you guys think. Like and subscribe, guys. Subscribe, help me uh, build this channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you, and I'll talk to you guys later. See you on the next one.